Effective communication is essential in every aspect of our life. A person who can communicate effectively will always have an advantage when dealing with people. The seven C's of communication are a list of principles or values for people to apply to their communication. The seven C's are clear, correct, complete, concrete, concise, considered and courteous. So, what are those principles being referred to? Are there any real-world examples, both positive and negative? In this video, I will discuss these questions with you. Number 1. Clear. Communication should be clear and easily understandable. Avoid jargon, complex language, or ambiguous terms that may lead to confusion. The message should be straightforward and to the point. For example, Hi John, I would like to schedule a meeting with you in regards to yesterday's conversation. The topics you covered were great, and I'd like to speak about them in detail. Please let me know when you would like to have this meet. Regards, Chris. In the above example, we do not know which conversation Chris is referring to. If Chris had met John on multiple occasions that day, then he wouldn't know what Chris is actually talking about. So, we can revise the message into. Hi John, I would like to schedule a meeting with you in regards to your presentation on email marketing. The topics you covered were great, and I would like to discuss implementation on our current clients. Please let me know when you have the time so that we can discuss it in detail. Regards, Chris. As you can see, after the change, the reader knows exactly what is expected of him because the message is clear. Number 2. Concise. Be concise in your communication by eliminating unnecessary details and avoiding wordiness. Focus on conveying the essential information without overwhelming the audience with irrelevant information. For example, Dear Bari, I wanted to talk about the video editing ideas we sort of planned out the other day. Don't you think it would make a lot of sense to also add additional elements to the videos? I mean, I think that would sort of improve the quality of the videos, as well as have a stronger impact on the client's message. For instance, we could add a dissolve transition to each movie, which would then give it a seamless flow. This would then make the video cleaner and be more appealing in the minds of the people. The impact would just be a lot greater. This makes a lot more sense according to me. What do you think? Regards. Alex. As you can tell, there is a lot of repetition in this email, and it is quite long. The email can be made shorter and to the point. For example. Hi Bari, I'd like to discuss our video editing plans from the other day. Considering the client's message, I propose adding dissolve transitions to create a seamless flow. This would improve video quality and enhance overall impact. What are your thoughts? Best, Alex. Number 3. Concrete. Use specific and tangible language to make your message more concrete. Providing details and examples can help the audience better grasp the meaning and intent of your communication. Here is a bad example. We should increase efficiency in our operations. As you can tell, the above message lacks detailed instructions and guidance. Good example. To improve operational efficiency, each department should conduct a workflow analysis, identify specific bottlenecks, and implement targeted process improvements. Number 4. Correct. Ensure that your communication is grammatically correct, free from spelling errors, and follows proper punctuation and formatting. Incorrect language can undermine the credibility of the message and the sender. Here is a bad example. Hi Sam, it was wonderful meeting you last week. I had a good time. I'm sure we will be able to do some great work on this project. Let me know whether you need any supplies from the company, and I'll get them delivered as soon as possible. Thanks again, speak to you soon. Regards. Desmond. If you noticed in the above email, there are two errors. The first one is the writer has spelled weak incorrectly, and the second is the use of the word weather instead of weather. Please keep in mind that spell checkers don't always work, so make sure you proofread everything. Number 5. Consideration. Be considerate of your audience's needs, interests, and perspectives. Tailor your message to your audience, taking into account their knowledge level, expectations, and any cultural or contextual factors that may influence how they interpret the information. For example, some companies announce layoffs without addressing employee concerns or providing support. This lack of empathy can leave employees feeling disregarded or neglected by their employers, potentially impacting the loyalty of the remaining workforce. To make their employees feel more comfortable, the company should make the following announcement. Due to organizational changes, some positions will be affected. 
We understand this may be difficult, and we are offering counseling services and financial support during this transition. Number 6. Complete. Provide all the necessary information for the audience to understand the message fully. Incomplete communication can lead to misunderstandings or misinterpretations. Include relevant details and address potential questions or concerns. Here is a bad example. Hi guys, please make sure to carry all the items tomorrow for the meeting. Regards, J. As you can tell, the message is clearly incomplete. There are no details as to what items, which meeting, where, and at what time. Therefore, J should revise the email in the following way. Hi guys, just a reminder that we have a meeting scheduled at 10 a.m. tomorrow at conference room 304 to discuss the Britannia event. Please make sure you get all the event props that need to be presented to the client. Regards, J. Number 7. Courtesy. Maintain a polite and respectful tone in your communication. Being courteous fosters a positive relationship between the sender and the receiver. Consider the feelings and perspectives of your audience and choose your words carefully. Here is a bad example. Dear Tom, I have noticed that there are always delays in the orders. You need to focus on the orders department as a priority. Please get all the orders cleared ASAP. Regards. Sam. There is a very good chance that the reader will get angry if they receive a message like this. It might result in creating a toxic environment rather than solving any issues. Here is another way you can convey the same message. Dear Tom, thank you for your work at the book fair. I have noticed that there are orders pending which need to be cleared on priority. I would appreciate it if you could focus on getting these cleared so that we can avoid any delays to the customer. Thanks a lot and please let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Best, Sam. Now you can see that the same message has been conveyed in a constructive and positive manner. The reader would be more likely to respond positively in this case rather than react. To sum up, the way we communicate is a huge factor in how successful we are in life. If we communicate effectively, it gives us more credibility in our jobs as well as personal life. Using the seven C's of communication, that is when you're clear, concise, concrete, correct, consider the speaker, complete and courteous, with your message, you will become an effective communicator and find more success in your interactions with people.